how did you find mm-hmm. out that that was your sweet spot? Um, I think you feel these types of things in your gut. They're the things you do that people aren't telling you to do. I don't know. I was like, <laughs> it was like me in a storage closet with some brooms and some books and stuff running nations. I love it because some people it's in a garage, some people it's in a garage, some people it's in the dorm. Yeah. And then for, for you, me, it was, it was a storage, storage closet. closet. It was like Mark Zuckerberg was in the yeah, dorm. It was a storage and Google closet. Google was a garage and Thai Heat, it was a storage, storage closet. closet. Mm-hmm. But I got my chops in a storage closet. So I started running a B2B marketing agency out of the storage closet at my MBA program. And that was my beginning in B2B marketing. Mic drop. <laughs> The first search engine you search is the one in your mind. You know, you're calling up, what do I know already about this spot I find myself in and what solutions am I aware of? And a lot of times, like people just go with. Welcome to Driving Impact. Ty, welcome to the Driving Impact podcast. I'm so excited to see you today. It's been, it's a dream come true, honestly. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure. And for those who don't know Ty, Ty is a mark, the market engagement director at LinkedIn, where she works at the B2B Institute, which is a think tank for LinkedIn that solves all of marketing's problems, all biggest problems, yeah. It's <laughs> B2B problems. and it's beyond B2B. So Ty, I wanna triple down on your career. You were, in my head, you're an Olympian, because when I started at LinkedIn, <laughs> somebody told me, Ty, she was in the Olympics, and it still stuck to my head. You're a for, Let's say you're a former athlete, mm-hmm. and how did you go from being a former athlete to now being the director of market engagement at LinkedIn in B2B and what were the different pivots that you've done in your career? Mm-hmm. And did you have any like important turning points and moments that help you find your calling? Yeah, first of all, I love that somehow it went from like where I am to the Olympics. Like <laughs> actually, <laughs> we're not being it would have been amazing all. to actually go, but I, I was Olymp- a two-time Olympic trials qualifier in the 800 meters, which is like don't if you can people can fight me on this it is literally like one of the hardest races i would say steeplechase is the only one that's maybe harder than that but anyway it's a big deal it's a it's a it's Congrats. a tough race but i i loved it uh but start that was the an excellent starting point because what i got from it was discipline mm-hmm. being able to focus on something consistently learning how to deal with failure hmm, that's a big so one so that's a, that's a big one you know getting getting second place, getting third place, and, and learning how to get back out there and look at what you didn't do so well so that you can come back stronger next time. And then just even thinking about, I don't know if we have any track and field folks in the audience, but even thinking about the 800 meter as a race itself, yeah. it's a, it's a you, you're sprinting, and it's also strategic because it's distance. We're distance sprinting, yeah, pretty much. Um, so it's it's painful but strategic at the same time. So I, I think there's a lot you can learn from that, like making decisions in the moment, making judgment call, snap judgment calls, yeah. but also thinking about what is my strategy going into this. So I lo- I got so much of a foundation from track and field that I bring into my career. Yeah. So. Um, How did I get to where I am right now? Um, Ran track growing up. One of my best memories is like my parents taking me to the the track, but followed that all the way through college, went to Georgetown, um, finished as one of the top ranked 800 meter runners, wanted to continue running track and field because there's only so much time in your life that you can do something like that. So I found the Nike farm team. So I had some coaches that had moved out to California, so at Stanford University, training a group of 800 meter runners okay. um, to try out for the 2004 Olympics. And so that's what brought me to the Bay Area. I, you know, I'm the child of Jamaican parents. Mm-hmm. Um, talking to them, the, the usual careers are, you know, doctor, lawyer, engineer, choose one. Wasn't, same, same with is that, I don't know if that was that your experience oh, yeah. It's too? like you have three career choices, yeah. your lawyer, engineer, or doctor. Mm-hmm. Maybe psychologist. Maybe psychologist. Yeah. Right. So tech, working in tech, 
not a thing, but the pursuing track and field brought me to the heart of Silicon Valley. Which is amazing. That's that's how I ended up. So I started out as a as a first grade assistant teacher. Wow. Which was wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love the kids. It was like a affluent private elementary school, um, which was a great experience in itself. It allowed me to get to the track every day by 3.30, school ended, I'm at the track, I'm training. The problem was I was getting sick all the time. The kids were sneezing on me. I had to oh, find no. I had to find something else. So this is a, this is how I ended up in tech. This is random. Every Craigslist.com. You know Craigslist, yeah. right? So I'm I'm like I can't train. I'm I'm sick. I need to figure this out. I'm looking for another role position, something that I can allows me to train for track at the same time. I stumble across a business development position mm. at Google on Craigslist. No way, like a sales job. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I said at the time, I was like, oh, this looks interesting. Decided to apply, get invited in for the interview. The lady's like, you have no experience in this. <laughs> like, why should I give you a chance? Um, I am somebody who who jumps off of things and, fi and figures things out. I know that about myself. I told this woman, if you give me a chance, I will be the top performing person <laughs> on your team within the quarter. And she was like, let me see if this girl can do it. And then I was like, I got the role and then I had to do it. So you were hired and then you learn how I to do sales, to do it. business development I had, at Google. Yeah, I had to figure it out. I had to figure it out. Um, so that was a grind. But uh, I went from there to Google AdSense. Mm-hmm to Google AdWords, to Google product, I moved through the different different roles at Google. They were supportive of me taking time off to go try out for the Olympics in 2004. That's incredible. Uh, but that was, that was my entry into tech. And I've been in tech ever since. Um, fell in love with marketing. Um, I, I did study politics. I thought I was gonna go into government, but mm -hmm. I think marketing, is like politics in a way because it's about ideas and moving people, moving yeah. things forward. So there was a lot of things that appealed to me about government and politics yeah. are inside of marketing. Messages, moving people at scale, thinking about what beh human behavior yeah. and what scares people, what makes them inspired. How do we, how do we move them? How do messages land? I think it's that, so it's so interesting, Ty, because mm -hmm. like we have a similar background. Mm -hmm. So when I hear you, I was not a track runner at all, but I spent <laughs> ten years at Google in mm -hmm. sales and business development, yeah. and, and that's mm -hmm. like it's like be, being an Olympian because that's that's hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I studied political science as well, and then you did, yeah, get got into marketing. So I totally like feel like yeah. you're, my, you're my soul sister. kindred spirits yeah. here. I didn't yeah. know that about you. That's great. That's so funny yeah, though. Yeah. Keep going. I want to hear more. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Um, so I spent a, I spent quite a bit of time at Google and then, you know, my, my mom and dad, uh, have both have advanced degrees. So they both mm. continued on. It was important to me to go back to school. I kept finding different opportunities. And then finally I was like, I, I, I understand advertising. Yeah. I learned advertising at Google's and Google AdWords. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you learn about, you know, pay, the whole world of pay-per-click and yeah. how does that work and that there's a lot to know there. But what about the fundamental science of marketing? Like, what does it mean to build a brand? What is marketing? What's marketing strategy? How do you come up with that? What does that really mean? That's what I wanted to understand. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to get my MBA in marketing and operation system management, looking at different schools. Yeah. I came across, I went to a, um, looked at a lot of different schools, but I came across um, a professor at Emory University. Mm. And it, w it was a place I was considering, but I, didn't, I, I wasn't looking at it as strongly until this entrepreneurship professor, and this is actually, a, he's, a, he's a mentor to me, this gentleman named Charlie Getz. Charlie Getz. And he said that, uh, I talked about my passion for entrepreneurship as well as marketing. And he said, he he's a serial entrepreneur. Okay. And has launched a number of successful businesses and teaches there. And he said, if you come here, I'll help you start something. That's incredible. So he and was one of the he pivotal was mentors. One of the catalysts for me 
making the choice and he kept his word. He kept his word. Um, after the first year, um, I started a agency out of a storage closet Wow! in the program off. I'm like, do y'all, did they know that? I don't know. I was like, it was like <laughs> me in a storage closet with some brooms and some books and stuff running an agency. I love it. Cause some people it's in a garage, some people it's in a garage, some people it's in the dorm. Yeah. And then for, for you, me, it, it was, was a storage, storage closet. closet. It was like Mark Zuckerberg was in the yeah, dorm. It was a storage and then Google closet. Google was a garage and Thai Heat, it was a storage, storage closet. closet. But great. I got my chops in a storage closet, but um, B2B, the B2B angle, I was in coffee shops and I was like trying to keep up with what's happening in the world of marketing. And I found myself downloading at the time, like all this stuff from HubSpot, just downloading. Nice. Like I was like filling out those forms. I was like, give me all the knowledge to the point where somebody called me from HubSpot. They were like, are you an agency? <laughs> like, what is, who are you exactly? I probably was like the top downloader or something. Wow, I probably I triggered it. some sort of like thing. Um, so they were like, are you an agency? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm just a person who is trying to learn about inbound marketing and B2B. And the guy was like, well, do you want to be an agency? And I was like, sure. Wow. <laughs> so let's do wow. this. The randomest entrance into B2B that you could imagine. So I started running a B2B marketing agency out of the storage closet at my MBA program. And that was my beginning in B2B marketing. Mic drop. <laughs> You know, I mean, you just, you follow what the spirit tells you to do. The guy said, do you want to be an agency? And I said, that sounds great. I want to, I want to see like Ty Heath in the 20s sitting in that closet with all the yeah. downloads. It's incredible. And then how, what brought you to LinkedIn? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So after running my agency for a while, I learned so much and I have so much respect for entrepreneurs people who run agencies, the agency business, you, you gotta, you have to, you have ideas, you gotta deliver. Yeah. You have customers that need leads and in B2B relation, there's relationship building. Yeah. You have to manage a lot of different moving parts from the social to the blogging, to the SEO, to there's a lot to understand. And that's part of why I like B2B so much. Mm -hmm. Like the, the whole relationship building aspect of it is fascinating to me. And nurturing all the leads. Yeah, the lead, the leads. All, all of that, I, I, I loved it. I loved it. Plus, it's kind of an underdog type thing. People are yeah. like, people are not necessarily like, I love B two B. Let me do B two B marketing. It's, I mean, B2B I like underdog type sexy. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, I, yeah, we try to make B two B sexy. So, um, but um, sorry, what was what were we talking? About? What brought you? So, how did LinkedIn find yes, you? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so um, running my agency for a while, and um, it was great. Built built up a small team. Uh, I had f wonderful, um, took some businesses that were, you know, startups into like fruition, mm -hmm. which was like a huge point of pride for me, huge point of pride. Mind Tickle, for example, was one of the companies. I know they're uh, actually a tool that LinkedIn yeah, uses yeah, today. Yeah. So you brought that was one of my small brands from brands. being startups yeah. to being like, like mainstream brands mm -hmm. or maybe potentially yeah. IPO and whatnot. Yeah. Just think, like getting them from zero leads to you know, getting to be viable, you know? Wow, business. And so, so yeah, so I loved the work, but what I found that I loved most about the work was exploring like the science of it, mm. explaining it, breaking down the complexities of it. And I said, what would it look like for me to do that aspect of it more often? And, um, you know, when I was at Google, I think the time that I was happiest was when I was in my product education role, mm. when I was traveling and teaching people, how do you think about doing SEM pay-per-click effectively? What does it look like? Um, how did you find mm -hmm. out that that was your sweet spot? Because it takes reflection it does take to reflection. identify what are yeah. you passionate about when you're doing a role that's a very high altitude role, at high speed as well, high yeah. intensity. Yeah. Well, I mean, going back to Google, um, I think you feel these types of things in your gut. Um, they're the things you do that 
people aren't telling you to do, mm -hmm. but you, you're just finding that you're doing them because you love them. So, so for example, um, I, I, when I was um, working in like kind of a customer service type role mm -hmm. at Google, I found myself just like researching competi the competition, researching like how might we frame this differently for a customer. So I would just build it, make a deck, and then share it out to the team. Yeah. Um, so I was just doing this just for fun and it, like, cause I, I loved it. And then one of the leaders there liked a deck that I created and mm -hmm. she was like, she's like, you should, you, why don't you present this to the team? And then she was like, you should do educate. You should be out talking about this. Like you should go do this. It's like market research. Yeah. You're passionate about I'm passionate about it. And I was just doing it anyway. And I just love taking things that are complex mm -hmm. and thinking about how to make it simple, but not just simple, but like also entertaining. Yeah. I've always been like, um, a teacher at heart and a little bit of a ham <laughs> like a little bit of a ham as a child i love to like make people feel comfortable with information and find openings for people i love creating experiences around it so i just found that like whenever i was doing something like that is when i was happiest and so i had a moment when i was running my agency it was like four o'clock in the morning oh well wow. and i was like looking at like the red glow of the alarm clock and I was like doing somebody's campaign and it was like I was like wait a minute what am I doing <laughs> like this is great and I'm learning I've learned a lot and I have these chops I have these skills I've dr I know how to drive leads yeah but the part that I love about it is like the breaking down of the concept the consulting yeah. aspect of it and I was like that's I need to it's time so it's that's time. how you found your calling because I feel yeah. like if it was 4 a.m and you didn't have mm -hmm. any sense of time and space, mm -hmm. it's you were in a state of flow, mm -hmm. right? So thinking mm -hmm. about our audience is like, if you're trying to find yeah. your calling, is think about what are the different moments in your career, in your life, your personal life, mm -hmm. professional life, where you just, time disappears and it's not something that you have to do, but you're in a full state of flow. That's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I started reaching out. Um, shout out to Heidi Anderson. I don't know if I can drop names on the yeah, <laughs> just here, drop all love, the names. Love her, but um, I reached out to her. She we we had worked together at Google, and I said, "What's going on over at LinkedIn?" And she was like, "Oh, she's like, there's a agency and channel like education role open," and so I applied. That's how you yeah, started. Yeah, that's how I started. Yeah, so I got back to doing like more of what I loved at the at the core. Yeah. So you stayed in your mm -hmm. area of passion and you tripled mm -hmm. down. And now that brought you to be at this very innovative portion of LinkedIn, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites, honestly. When I joined, I was like, <laughs> I cannot believe this exists. I was freaking out. I was yeah. sitting with you, you all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is so amazing. I'm a big hype girl. But it's a, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing about this. Yeah. And from me sitting in customer mm -hmm. meetings with you and the rest of the team at the B2B Institute, mm -hmm. what I uncovered is this concept that all those brands, they want to become memorable, mm -hmm. right? You, Peter, John, yeah. Jan, everybody's like, you got to have a memorable brand. <laughs> so tell me, Ty, why is mm -hmm. it important for a company in this day and age to be memorable? Yeah. And then how do you get there? What are the frameworks and mm -hmm. approaches? Yeah, we love behavioral science at the B2B Institute, Yeah, which was, by the way, an intelligent risk um, that we took to create that's now become a, th a brand and, and hopefully a, a, a guiding light for folks within B2B. That's what we aim to, to be at the B2B Institute it's with, men super, with mental it's, models. It's super inspiring. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're really proud. And um, but, you know, we're, we're huge fans of behavioral science. Uh, memory is something I think is hard. It's hardwired. Mm. It's how we, it's what humans do to make decisions and under, make sense of things. And it's, it's hardwired. And, and so we like to talk about this idea of the brand that's remembered is the brand that bought, that's bought. Okay. Because, you know, we as humans are looking for things that catch our attention that that are familiar that we can trust you know that inspire us uh and those are things that marketing can tap into you know the, the, there's this one interesting study that we talk about in our work 
mm-hmm. where like just thinking about memory mm-hmm. because you know it's it's it is really all about memory people there are a few things that humans do outside of the context of of memory and you know there's this one study that says that like when you if you there's a study somebody was learning vocabulary underwater yeah and and they're it they're most easy it's most easiest for them to recall that vocabulary when they're back underwater again so memory is is not just about like a thing or a moment it's about like what you're doing it's like the when as well there's a lot of there's things wrapped up in that that are associated like the types of ice cream that you eat at christmas time versus another like all of those those things it's very human i love it so mm-hmm. the brand that is remembered is the brand that is bought mm-hmm. and that's why the concept of memorability is important in marketing but in right. life which means that when we were cavemen and cave women mm-hmm. we had to remind us like we have to thought think about something to some association and coming from mm-hmm. memory that would dictate our behavior Yes, that's absolutely right. It's about this it's decision making. Right? You are in a moment when you need something. Mm-hmm. The first search engine you search is the one in your mind. You know, you're calling up, what do I know already about this spot I find myself in and what solutions am I aware of? And a lot of times like people just go with the first thing that we talk about this idea of satisfying. Like people you know, don't have the energy to do like a ton of research and yeah. do all the things. And to, I mean, we think we are doing some research online, but a lot of times it comes back to that. What's already there for me. So that's why branding is important. It's, important. it's kind of like as mm-hmm. humans, right? We're mm-hmm. pressing the easy button. That's crazy. Where, where am yep. I going to go? I'm going to go where I went yesterday mm-hmm. and the day before and where it's comfortable. And my, that's, so that's right. important. So when brands come to you, Mm -hmm. What do you tell them to do to become memorable? Mm -hmm. Because that's the million dollar question. Yeah, yeah. So this is where you start to break down what makes brands memorable. And we, there are a couple things, but like the biggest drivers of memory Mm -hmm. are inside the, you know, the things that catch the eye and and draw the attention. And they're also in, in what allows you to be seen in the first place. So we like to talk about the, you know, in our, our work, creativity mm-hmm. being one of the biggest drivers of growth okay. for a brand and then media or reach also being another big driver of, of growth in a brand. So when I talk about creativity, just to break that down for a moment, these are mm-hmm. all the things you think about uh, when you think about a brand itself, like so the, being able the to the feel, it's the creative, it's the feel, It's but it's, it's beyond the, the image. Mm-hmm. It's also the it can be a sound it can be a feeling it can there's emotion connected to it it's the just the distinctive brand assets inside of the created creative itself it's like the we talk about buying situations what is it linked to what are the situations linked to Mm -hmm. like so for example i mean we're all coffee drinkers maybe to some extent you know what type of coffee you think about when you're walking down the street versus the type of coffee you think about when you're curled up in your couch with a blanket at home. All of these things are things that we can think about. And and as if we answer the question for ourselves, what do we want to be known for? Mm -hmm. All of those things can be put into play to help build the type of brand that you're, that you want to connect to your audience. I think you had me at coffee. Coffee. Because yes. yesterday you and I went to a coffee <laughs> shop that I'm not going to name. Yeah, we won't name as names. As soon as somebody said name this names. coffee shop, I was, I just felt the whole experience. Yeah. I could taste my favorite coffee. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I don't know, I just, my, my heart felt warm. Yeah. So that's the expression of memorability. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because I was just, it was not about the coffee. It mm-hmm. was about like, oh, I'm just sipping on my coffee. I'm with mm-hmm. my girlfriends. I'm having fun. And I just, I don't, I just felt at peace. Yeah. So that's why yeah. brands want to become mm-hmm. memorable. And then you talked about the creative, the importance mm-hmm. of the creative, but not the creativity is like everything surrounding a brand. Mm-hmm. And then you talked about the media is like, how do people get access to it? Because access right. is important as well. Access is important. And so we, we are reach maximalists at the B2B Institute. So reach matters, you know, so you do have to grab someone's attention, but to do that, you have to reach them in the first place. So, you know, in B2B, 
we talk about cat category reach, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't want people to assume, like, I think one of the things that we are challenged with in the space of B2B is this challenge of hyper-targeting because we can target like Joe in Montana with like precision. We think that's the best move. But what we don't know is that Joe is maybe surrounded by other decision makers that need to make a decision. We're not talking to them. We're not talking to people who are rising up professionally that will make a decision. We just need to cast a wider net and not assume that we know who's going to be interested in the product. Uh, so in B2C, if you're selling toothpaste, you can target everyone with teeth, right? But in B2B, if you're selling an analytics platform, you want to, as broadly as possible, talk to everyone who could potentially buy an analytics platform to be successful. Because there's a concept in B2B that it's mm -hmm. group buying decisions. So it's, mm -hmm. there's not one person who makes a decision. Mm -hmm. It's multiple people that you need to influence throughout the journey. And that's, that's why right. you talk about like reach mm -hmm. maximalism, mm -hmm. which I love, I love it. It's like, like but how mm -hmm. does it not, like when I hear maximalism, I'm thinking spray and pray, but how is it not spraying and praying mm -hmm. in your approach mm -hmm. for B2B? Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that you maximize the reach, but you don't yeah. just spray? <laughs> <laughs> Spray and pray. So that's why we're talking about cat like category reach. I mean, mm -hmm. I, we know that not everyone's going to say, let me buy a million dollar analytics platform. Mm -hmm. Like we, under we understand that, which is that's distinct from B2C, where it's like everyone has teeth. Yeah. So, I mean, and this is where like shameless plug for LinkedIn, right, where you can identify a broad group of decision makers, right? So whether it's, whether decision makers are in tech or a particular vertical, you, you want to have the widest possible scenario, but also keeping in mind that there are people that it doesn't make sense. They're not going to be the audience for that as, as well. I think what you said around like being a maximalist in the category, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. some type of targeting, but right. reaching that category and being, mm -hmm. make, make sure that you're you're really maximizing it. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So now, like, we're talking to a lot of individuals in the podcast. Some people would aspire to be like you, mm. right? To have a strong brand. Mm -hmm. Some people aspire to be also memorable. You're both memorable and you have a strong brand. Thank so you. So how does one individual, I mean, as soon as I started at LinkedIn, I got to know you right away. I'm not sure how mm. and when, but everybody mm -hmm. was talking. You need to meet, <laughs> you need to meet Thai Heat. And I was like, new trying to log into the systems, right? So you have a memorable brand and then mm -hmm. your brand is working for you because mm -hmm. people are telling me that I need to meet you. Mm -hmm. And then I go online, I find you and I'm like, who is this person? And I watch the videos and I'm like in love. And you were like, oh my God, this woman is a freak. Why is she liking <laughs> all of my videos? I just thought it was brilliant and I mm. want to know you. So what is beautiful about having a strong mm -hmm. and memorable brand is that mm -hmm. your brand is opening doors while you sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. for our audience and people out there who want to know how do I become memorable? How do I leave a, a legacy while I'm alive? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. So mm -hmm. how do you do it? How do we take these these concepts and bring them back uh, mm -hmm. at the individual level. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, I think I just want to double click on what you said about door opening while you're sleeping because your brand is out front as an individual. It's speaking for you. It is building credibility with people before you say anything. And it is lowering people's guards, opening doors, opening opportunities for collaboration. It is a very powerful tool. I think a lot of the things that we talk about in building a company brand can be applied to building one's personal brand. But the first step is to just, I think, under, for people to understand, well, what is it that you wanna be known for? Mm -hmm. What is it you wanna be known for? And I, everyone, because we're human, have like beautiful, unique characteristics that they can bring to it, whether it's like an, a big idea something you believe in that you stand for. Um, it's the way you introduce yourself on stage in meetings. It's how you dress. Yeah. It's how you regard people. Like, and you think about a brand identity, a brand is really all the, the compilation of all of the different touch points and ways that people interact with a brand. Yeah. It's how you make people feel mm -hmm. when they leave your presence as well. Do they feel seen? Do they feel regarded? Um, so it's a it's it's you're actually asking a big question, and I I think people, it's helpful um, for people to first of all understand that that's something you can actually wield. 
Yeah. And and to be thoughtful about well, what do I want that to what do I want that to be? But not not in an inauthentic engineer yeah, way because yeah, yeah. that's gross. Not calculated. Not, not calculated. you know. But, but I think what you said is how to mm-hmm. make people feel. Mm-hmm. And I, when I coach my team or friends or family, mm-hmm. it's listen. Sometimes I love what Oprah says is follow the energy. Oh yes. And we tend to flock around energies mm-hmm. that are um, uplifting, mm-hmm. positive, like make us feel so, some something, mm-hmm. right? Like for example, I'm like I'm a big fan of yours because I like your energy, mm, and I think I the, like yours. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I think it's like going back and reflecting on like what is the energy when I come into the room? Do I bring lift the energy up? Do I lift the energy down? Am I an addition or am I a subtraction mm, of energy? Mm-hmm. And I think that's important because people want to drive a brand, but if you're not in the room, people are like, oh, thank God this person is gone. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. And I think that there needs to be some level of self-awareness, like mm. you being clear on how you're regarded and doing, and doing the work. I mean, I think, so for to get clarity, like I like to ask three questions. They're questions that people maybe don't think about But because they're challenging, like, what are you passionate about? What are you committed to? You know, what do you aspire to create? So that's future, future looking. Um, You know, you might. It's big. It's it's big. Another exercise I've done is called My Irresistible Life. And it's writing the story of your life, looking back from the time of your death across multiple years. I know it's a little bit morbid, but what it does is get you really clear on your North Star. And am I making decisions in alignment with that? And then I think once you're clear, because like if you're going to run to a destination, it's good to know like where you're running, yeah. right? You just want to start running just randomly in a direction. But once you're clear, now you can be consistent and disciplined. And uh, it's, you know, you you could take one shot at something, but once you're clear, now you can take a thousand shots at that thing. And one of them is going to land. Because you know, you know what is the goalpost? Mm-hmm. And you know yeah. that you're never going to stop. It's a bit mm-hmm. like when you were running the 800 exactly. meters. Exactly. So mm-hmm. you know what the goal is and you know that it's it's aligns with your deep purpose mm-hmm. and that's where you want to be able to drive impact. Exactly. So I'm I'm going to continue to talk about the things that I'm passionate about. You know, I I believe that inspiration, information and action are catalysts for transformation. I am all about teaching people like breaking down complex things to get people to move from point A to point B. I apply that to pretty much everything I do, um, whether it's the B2B Institute work, whether it's uh, work within Transform Her, Mm -hmm. um, whether it's this new uh, venture I have around, uh, it's a real estate investment where I'm building a retreat based on the concept of tribe. Everything is Let's talk about that. that. Let's talk about this, super important, because I wanted to ask Mm -hmm. you, so you found your calling, like mm-hmm. your your boss lady, like on all the big stages at Cannes, at Adweek, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so what's next for you? And I know you yeah. created that leadership uh, program for women at LinkedIn, which is mm-hmm. called Transform Her. Mm-hmm. But what else? Like you talked about this retreat. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, yeah. Like how <sighs> are you planning to drive impact in the world? <laughs> Thai heat. What are you going to do to yes. transform the planet? Yes. Yes. So, you know, it's 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 in the same vein. It's the same lane that I'm going to continue to play in until I can I'm not I take my last breath. I'm going to be on a rocking chair on a porch being like, "I did that." Oh, like it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> But um so tell me about the retreat. I'll tell you I'll tell you let I'm, me tell you, about, get my <laughs> tell you about the retreat. So, I was struck um, with and I think everybody's had this experience like through the pandemic about how isolated we are move loneliness um, the mm. loneliness of it all and um, I had a, in 2019 I, I had a trip to Ghana I went to the Ghana Tech Summit I want to go Bring I, I know we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go but I had the opportunity to meet a really special person uh, she is a leader within the Mullen Lowe Agency. I don't know if I can name names here. Yeah, name, name all names, the names. names of Nicole Dua, I love her. Um, and she is a princess of a tribe. And I had an opportunity to sit down with her at her agency. And I shared with her that my mom told me that I have a great, 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 I don't know how many greats, grandfather that was um, taken from west africa to jamaica and that he was from the ashanti tribe oh my gosh 
I'm having chills. I yes. So she was like, she goes to the Ashanti tribe, and she like pulled this picture frame from her from around her desk, and she said, "This is the king and the queen of the Ashanti tribe. I want to take you to see your people." Oh my gosh! When are you going? So here's the thing: I had like a day left in the trip. I wasn't able to go, and then the pandemic hit. So this is a goal for me in 2024 to get back to Ghana. I'll go with you. This. Let's do I this. I have a friend who left yeah. New York and Wall Street to mm -hmm. open a yoga center in Ghana. So oh my gosh. let's plan it. Let's, I'm super excited. Let's Any go. plugs? Because I know you got to go. Because this go. woman is busy. She's yeah. like back to back to back. Yeah. I'm so happy that you were able to be yeah. here. Before we go, I want to yeah. know what is the name of your retreat and your yeah. project. And then top three very short career tips for people okay. who want to grow their career and accelerate Absolutely. and drive impact in the world. Okay. So one thing, I learned from her, I learned what it looks like to live in a tribe and I was struck by the community of it and I wanted to bring, I want to bring aspects of that back for us. And so the, the tribe is really about accomplishing things together, getting things done. There are a number of things that maybe we don't love to do, but doing them together makes it easier. So there will be a number of different concepts from anywhere from like thinking about, I need to write a living will. I need to think about elder care. I need to do 40 social posts. It's going to be all of this. Oh, we're going to get stuff done together <laughs> and we're going to have fun. There's going to be private chefs and wellness and all sorts of goodness. So that's the idea of the retreat. It's called Marambella. Marambella. Uh, Marambella. Okay. And then I'll yes. add it on the screen so people yeah. can follow. They have Fantastic. Will have names. Okay. Three tips. Three tips. Um, you are worthy. Just by you being and breathing on this planet, you are worthy. Self-love. Self-love. Um, so how everything starts from that. Second thing, you know, look to your left and your right and look at how you can do things in community. The people to your left and your right are you, the peop are the people on the journey with you. It's so much easier to do things together. And then step three, uh, your platform. Like going back to what I was saying about building a brand Think about what is it that you want to be known for? What's the legacy you want to lead? Lifer, lifer, lifer. Life is richer and more meaningful when you're resolute about the direction that you're going. And also leader, leadership is, is, is what you need and discomfort is part of what it looks like to be a leader. So embrace that and, and keep going. Embrace the struggle. Mm -hmm. Embrace the discomfort. Mm -hmm. Live in your purpose. Thank you so much, Ty. I'm yeah. super excited. I want to be part of, of your tribe. Come into the tribe. Yeah. Yes. I want to go to Ghana as well to see We're the going. king and the queen. We're I'm going. Ready. We're going. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining yeah. us at Driving mm -hmm. Impact. Ty, I'm so, so, so excited. From a year and a half when I first heard of you to then meeting you to now interviewing mm -hmm. you, I feel like a better human already. I feel connected to you and your tribe. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited mm -hmm. to keep seeing you uh, grow, evolve, and launch yourself into the mm -hmm. world. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you so much for having me and for creating this space for conversation. Mm -hmm.